Every inhale a little longer than the one before it, every exhale a little longer than the previous inhale. Gradually grow your inhale to at least five seconds. Remembering that we're relaxing the outer musculature on the in-breath so that we're not fighting against the breath. As you exhale, we are engaging, especially the inner body, to draw everything back toward the spine. As we establish this dynamic breathing, a breath that does require our full attention, a breath that is <clears throat> informed by our senses, right? We listen to the breath, we can feel the breath, we can even watch with our mind's eye, the breath moving our body. But after, you, after you've taken about three more rounds of this, make sure you take a strong exhale, draw that navel back toward the spine, and just roll for, oh, before you roll forward, notice which leg is in front, we're gonna come back to this position in a sec. So roll forward, come onto the hands and the knees, take an in-breath, extend the spine. So we're gonna take a second inhale and expand all the way up into the chest. Then we'll exhale round the back and hold empty at the end of the exhale. You can exhale through the mouth to help you move that diaphragm out of the way. Once you are empty, hold Uddiyana Bandha. When you're ready to take an inhale, extend the spine. Exhale, round the back. Maybe exhale through the mouth. Hold empty. Find your Uddiyana Bandha. If you're not sure what that is, you're just keeping the action of exhale going. You continue to exhale even while you're empty, which will knit the ribs in close and will kind of concave out the front of the belly, the front of the torso, I should say. One more time, take your in-breath, extend the spine. Exhale all the air out. Round your back, hold empty with Uddiyana Bandha, or simply by keeping the engagement going for as long as you can. On the next in breath, extend, cross your shins and sit back onto your mat, this time bringing the opposite leg in front. Once you are here, take an inhale and open up the chest. And as you exhale, draw the belly button back toward the spine. In this position, hold empty with Uddiyana Bandha. Drawing the navel back and holding the exhale for as long as you can. Inhale, let that deeper in, uh, contraction go. Exhale, this time lean slightly forward, push your hands into your thighs and push your thighs back into your hands. And notice how that helps you find that deeper internal engagement. Hold empty for as long as possible. And when you're ready, inhale, lean back, extend the spine again. One more time, exhale all the air out, leaning forward, push hands into thighs, thighs back into hands, engage Uddiyana Bandha. Once you're empty and you've held empty for as long as you can, lean back, take an inhale, Good, and again, while seated and without leaning forward, see if you can find that same internal engagement. So we can work our abdominals simply by um, partaking in these bandhas. Lean forward again, bring your hands down to the ground, uncross your legs. This time we'll take an inhale. Exhale, round the back. Instead of just holding empty, do your abdominal massage. Drawing the belly button in and up and releasing, in and up and releasing, in and up and releasing. Do that as many times as you can. When you're ready to take another inhale, stop the churning, extend the spine, inhale. And exhale, round the back, exhale all the air out. And it really does help to exhale through the mouth. So feel free to do that at any time. Take your churning now for as many reps as you can. When you need to inhale, 
Stop churning first, inhale, extend, and one more time. Exhale all the air out. <sighs> Hollow out the belly, find Uddiyana Bandha. Without taking another inhale, so we keep the emptiness happening, release the abdominal contraction, bring it back up, release down, bring it back up. And when you're ready to inhale, extend the spine. And this time, press it back to downward facing dog. Once you're in down dog, start your breathe, start back into your breathing that you established at the beginning. So those inhales that last at least five seconds, exhales that last just a tiny bit longer than each inhale. And this is just to challenge our attention span, right? Part of why we love yoga so much, and maybe we don't even realize it, but part of why we really do love yoga is because it is, it is exercising our attention. It is helping us increase our attention span, increasing our ability to be tangibly present, which is very, very useful in today's world and is a skill set, in my opinion. It's not something that is innate to us, or maybe it was innate, but we've lost it. So bringing that innate quality, that innate intelligence back, finding a way to stay anchored to this longer exhalation just to keep us off of autopilot. And you have the added benefit of it basically giving your abs a good workout at the end of every exhalation. Once you've taken your next exhale here in down dog, bring the knees back down to the ground, inhale, extend the torso. Exhale, slide the knees out wide and move your hips towards your heels, walking your arms forward. Take an inhale into the back of your body, expanding into the back ribs here. Exhale, draw the belly button in and up. Even in this pose, it seems like an easy pose, but we still wanna tell the body that the integrity is there, the internal support is there. Inhale, puff up your back ribs, and then breathe below the ribs into the space between the ribs and the pelvis. Exhale, engage the front of that same area. So lower belly engages, Press into the front of your spine to feel the back muscles lengthening out. On your next inhale, we'll slither through the arms, moving into a Bhujangasana here, lifting the rib cage up. As you exhale, lower the ribs down. Inhale, the ribs will rise, the chest is opening. Exhale, lower the ribs, but traction them forward as you come down while the elbows continue to draw back. One more time, inhale, rise, floating your rib cage away from the ground, and exhale, resist the pull of gravity down, keep the back muscles working the entire way down. Once the forehead touches, inhale, push up to hands and knees, stand up onto the pads of your toes here, and exhale, bringing your shins off the floor, bring your forehead to your knees and your knees to your forehead. Inhale, shins are, are just hovering above the ground. Exhale, round the back, forehead to knees, knees to forehead, feel the end of the exhale, engaging your core for you. Last time, shins are hovering and forehead to knees. On your next in breath, straighten out your legs and exhale back to downward facing dog. Deep inhale and down dog and a strong, long exhale. Draw the knees down all the way to the ground this time, extend. Good, exhale, child's pose. Instead of holding again, we'll inhale and slither right through the arms into Bhujangasana. This time, lower the ribs as the legs rise for Ardha Salabhasana. Inhale, ribs rise, legs float down. Exhale, the legs float up as the ribs traction forward. Remember the forehead comes down last, but the front of the shoulders don't come down, they stay open. Inhale, lift the ribs, let the legs descend. Exhale, let the ribs descend and the legs rise. Keep your ribs on the floor, take an in breath. Make the legs longer here. Exhale, keep lengthening the legs back as you lower them back down. Push up on your inhale to hands and knees. Standing up onto the pads of the toes, exhale. <laughs> Bring your knees to your forehead and forehead to knees. Inhale, straighten out your legs. 
with the heels rising and exhale, heels down. Maybe you spread your toes into the ground. Maybe your toes even lift off the floor for downward facing dog. Deep inhale here. And a strong, long exhale. Once you are empty, holding empty with Uddiyana Bandha, bring your knees all the way down. Inhale, extend. Exhale, child pose. Walk your arms forward. Inhale, slither through the arms. Moving into low cobra. Exhale, lower the ribs. Allow the legs to rise. Now keep your ribs on the floor. Take an inhale. Bring your arms back and just put the, palm, the backs of the hands on the floor so your palms face up. Exhale, lower the legs, but again, we're lengthening the legs back as we lower down. Keep your forehead on the floor. Inhale, lift the legs. Try not to kick the legs up with your quads. Try to literally lift the thigh bones up with your hamstrings. Exhale, place the legs down while reaching your legs back. Again, inhale, float the legs off the floor. Exhale, reach the toes back as you slowly bring the tops of your toes to the ground. Hands alongside midribs, push up on inhale. Hands and knees, stand up onto the toes, your shins are hovering. Exhale, round the back, forehead to knees, knees to forehead. Inhale, straighten out the legs, but the heels are still lifting. And then exhale to downward facing dog. Deep breath in and downward facing dog. And exhale to empty out completely. This time we're going to jump forward or walk forward. Take your inhale and find your extended spine. Exhale, fold, crown back down towards your toes. Root down and lift halfway up, coming into a halfway rise. Spine is extending, your arms are reaching out, your hips are directly over your heels. Lift your heels off the floor on purpose. Good, exhale, fold. Keep the heels lifting as you lower. Inhale, lift halfway. Keep the heels rising. Exhale, dive and pull the ribs in. Closer to your thighs. Inhale, ribs rise. This time, keep the heels down, but keep the feeling of the heels lifting so we don't have the hips back behind the heels, right? Your, your shin bones are moving forward. It feels like you're about to fall forward. Good, and exhale, dive. Great job, folding in. This time, only move into halfway rise with the hands still on the ground. Plant your palms, jump back or walk back to a plank pose, and exhale to chaturanga. Inhale, move into up dog. You can also continue to take a low cobra here. Exhale, press it back to downward facing dog. <clears throat> holding here, walking the legs out if you'd like, but making sure that the movement that you do today is not something you can do without tangibly paying attention, right? We're working and exercising our attention span, using the breath, especially the exhale side of the breath to anchor our attention and as we anchor our attention to the out breath, we then make a, a, an out breath very different from the breath we would normally take. When you notice that your mind has wandered, you'll also notice that your exhale has come back to basically a passive exhalation. And that's when we re-engage, right? Take one final exhale here in down dog. Jump forward or walk forward. Inhale, extend. Exhale, fold, draw the crown down. Bring your ribs in even closer to your thighs. Lift halfway up with the arms reaching out. The heels can be down or up, but you want that feeling of shin bones forward. Exhale, fold in again. Keep the palms planted, inhale, extend. Jump back or walk back to your plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale to up dog. Exhale to downward facing dog. This time, as we move a bit in down dog, let's we'll bend both knees at the same time. As the knees bend, the pelvis will stay high, the heels will lift high and straighten. Bend the knees, tilt the pelvis up so the heels and the hips stay away from each other. 
and press the heels back down. Quads are strong, move the thigh bones back. One more time, heels up, sit bones continue to tilt up to the best of our ability, and exhale, heels down. One more full breath in and down dog. Exhale to empty out completely. Follow that exhale with your mind's eye all the way to empty, feel plugged in. Jump or walk forward and then inhale your torso away from your thighs. Exhale, using your core strength, pull the ribs as close to the thighs as possible. Keep your weight forward and rise as we are doing today, just halfway parallel with the floor. But try to push down through the heels, soften your knees enough to where you can feel like you're not hyperextending the knees, but actually stabilizing the knees here. And exhale, fold. Inhale, slow undulation forward, plant your palms, jump back. We'll do one more of these A series. Exhale to Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. And this time we'll bend both knees, but we'll bring the hips very low toward the heels. Like we're in a runner's crouch or an active child's pose. Inhale, the legs will straighten. Exhale back to where your sit bones are tracking toward the heels or drawing down toward the heels and the heels are rising. Inhale, straighten out the legs. And exhale, bend. And remember that you've got to watch your knees. Your knees may be telling you that this is too much. So you can move in that direction without overdoing. One more breath here as you remain in down dog. Strong exhale to deepen the connection to that stretch. Once you are empty, jump forward or walk forward. Inhale, extend. Exhale, crown toward the ground. Ribs in to touch the thighs. Bend your knees now, weight into your heels, move into Utkatasana. Exhale, dive forward, Uttanasana. Bend the knees, weight, weight into the heels, lift the arms, Utkatasana. Exhale, dive forward, Uttanasana. We're gonna move through this just one more time. Each time you move into your forward fold, Take yourself off of autopilot and really engage your abs. Pull those ribs in. One more time. Bend the knees. Sweep the arms overhead. Heels down. Toes up. Chest open. Exhale. Dive forward and fold it in. Use your core here. Pull in. Inhale. Extend. Plant the palms. Jump back or walk back. Stay here. Exhale. Draw navel in. Inhale. Your right, arm, right leg will come up. Exhale, right knee to right elbow. Inhale, right leg straight back. Exhale, forehead to knee. Inhale, straight back out of the hip. Exhale, right knee to left elbow. And extend your right leg all the way up to the sky for three-legged down dog. Root down to the palms of your hands. Take another inhale here. Good, exhale, bring right knee to right elbow. Again, this time from your down dog position. And we'll do that two more times. Right knee to right elbow. Last time, inhale, lift. And exhale, bring it in. Step your right foot to the outside of your right hand. Bring both of your hands are gonna be to the left side of the right foot. Slide your left toes back just a little bit more. Inhale here, extend the torso. Exhale, bend your elbows, and that right elbow is going to come in front of the right shin. Move down closer to the mat, and then straighten the arms back out. So we're doing a little lunge with a push-up. Down, and back up. Down, and back up. But from that pose, bring your left hand, just kind of claw the floor at your left fingertips so your wrist is neutral, and bring your right arm up for a twist. Keep pushing back with your left heel. Dial the right sit bone back. You can either keep that right arm up or bend the right elbow, reach around and just press the back of your hand into the left side of your lower back, allowing your chest plate to open more toward the heavens here. Take another deep in breath in twisting lunge. Good, exhale, right hand down alongside the outside of your right leg, or right foot I should say. Step your left foot in, 
and drape your body over your right thigh. Dial the pelvis around here again so that the inner edge of your right foot stays firmly rooted to the floor. We feel the weight of our body being drawn to midline, which allows us to dial the right sit bone back and down as the left hip bone points more toward the floor. Your back is rounded, your abs are strong. Final exhale here. Inhale into your halfway rise, just like we did uh, in our salutes, right? Push down through your left heel and reach your arms back. You can keep the arms out to either side as well. And let's actually do that because we always reach the arms back, right? So let's reach the arms out to either side. Remember this right knee is soft and we're working on keeping the hips squared. Deep inhale here. Now let's move with it. Exhale, plant your palms, round your back and drape your right ribs onto your right thigh. Inhale, rise halfway. Exhale, hands back down. We keep the legs supporting us, whether we're rounding the back or extending the spine. So we're already engaged in, right, in uh, keeping the hips squared off there. And last time, both hands down, draping the body over the right shin. Push your palms into the mat and step your right leg back. Take your inhale. Exhale, draw navel in. Inhale, the left leg up. Exhale, left knee to left elbow. Straight back on the in-breath, parallel with the floor, and round the back as you bring forehead to knee, and the knee comes in to meet the forehead. Extend the left leg back out, keep the elbow soft. Exhale, left knee to right elbow. Shoot the left leg to the sky. Take a strong exhale to root down with the palms, root back with the right quad, and lift with the left hamstring. Then exhale, left knee to left elbow. And back up, and we'll do two more of these. Left knee to left elbow, slowing down the movement. Remember, if it's taking us about six seconds to exhale, we wanna move through that contraction for at least six seconds. Last time, let's bring the knee in. Step the left foot to the outside of the left hand so that both of your hands are to the right side of your left foot. And your, hand, your fingers are basically right in line with those toes, push back through right heel. And then our push up, right? Down on the exhale with the elbows flaring out to either side of the room and back up on in breath. Down on exhale, this is not a ballistic stretch. We're moving very slowly. And last time. Once you get up to that uh, high position, right hand will come down, claw the floor with your fingertips if you'd like, and open to the left. Bend your left elbow if you want to, and press the back of your left hand into lower back right side. Open the chest towards the sky without sitting in your right shoulder. The right heel continues to reach back. The right glutes are activated here. Let your next exhale be about wringing out your spine so much that you can actually look up to see the sky or imagine the sky above that ceiling, right? Take another inhale here. Exhale, left hand down to the outside of the left foot. Step your right foot in closer and straighten out your left leg, fold it over. Hold here and just begin working your legs. So pushing the palms down, that'll help stabilize. Both inner thighs hug in, drape the body over the left leg. Feel the stretch without feeling any strain, right? And if you do feel like you're straining in your right knee or your left knee, right? Especially the back of that left knee, then change the pose. We talked about innate intelligence earlier. Your body knows what to do. You just have to listen. Now we're gonna take an exhale here. Engage the core even more. Plug into your banda because we wanna lift with that banda into our halfway rise position. Arms can reach back or out to either side. Good, exhale, hands come down and fold over. Inhale, rise halfway, moving into your extended spine position. 
Doesn't mean that we're opening up or dumping into the left hip. It's just a soft left knee. Both hips are square toward the ground. Exhale, hands down. Push down with the palms to help you find your core strength and round the back. Inhale, extend the spine. Exhale, round the back. Push down through the palm. Step the left foot back to meet the right foot. Take your in-breath. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. And exhale, back to downward facing dog. Hold in down dog for a few more breaths. Slowing down. Deciding to pay more attention. Deciding to pay attention for a longer period of time. Because what's really interesting about our breath is that if we are dismissing the exhale, let's say after two seconds, we're probably gonna take a two second exhale. But if we can maintain an awareness of the exhale for five or six seconds, you'll notice you can still activate those muscles that support the exhale. And that's when we really get into that internal engagement, really get into that deep core work. As you finish your last exhale, let's hold empty, find Uddiyana Bandha and jump forward or walk forward. Inhale when you land, exhale, fold the crown down. Good, bend the knees again, wait into your heels, rising up for Utkatasana. And this time from Utkatasana, we're gonna take a little variation. Stand up onto your toes and bring your arms up over your ears. Now we're gonna bend the knees. So this is from Bikram's Awkward Series. Your heels are lifting. Your spine is neutral, and then we sit down, right, so that the thigh bones are moving toward parallel with the floor. And Bikram says it's like you're sitting in a, in a straight back chair. Okay, that's, the, that's one position. And then we're gonna exhale and dive all the way forward. Now come up this time by standing up off of your heels, sweeping. <laughs> I'm still working on this one myself. Sweeping your arms up, lift those heels way up. Let yourself teeter and totter and fall. Good, exhale, keep the heels, move out of the way, please. Keep the heels up and lower slowly down. Just one more like that. Heels are rising, knees are bending, arms reach forward. Come up to our awkward series. And straighten out your legs, but keep your heels up. Dive forward. Good, we'll keep trying that a little more. <laughs> keep working on that one. Take an in-breath, extend. Plant your palms, jump back or walk back to a plank. Exhale, lower to chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the right leg up. This time, bring your knee to your forehead and forehead to knee. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bring it in. And inhale, lift. Last time, really working on the end of that exhale. Step your right foot through. Press your back heel flat and come up to warrior one. Arms rising. Good, find your feet and every time you exhale, remind your feet to root down more. Find your fingertips and each time you inhale, remind your fingertips to plug into the ceiling more dynamically. One more in breath in, uh, warrior one. And exhale, both hands come down. Transfer your weight onto your right foot. Lift the left leg up for standing foot. If you wanna work a little more balanced, take your right hand behind your right Achilles tendon, elbow behind the right knee and forehead behind, I'm sorry, forearm behind your right calf. Don't try to bring your forehead behind your calf. Take one more exhale here. Good, and then Bend your right knee and just touch the left toes to the ground. 
and bring it back up, straightening out the right knee. Two more like that. Bend the right knee, reach the left toes back, push down through your right foot, straighten out the right leg, move back into standing split. This time even more slowly and controlled as though you're resisting the pull of gravity all the way down. Press the back toes onto the floor, then push down through the palms and step your right leg back. Deep inhale here in high push-up position. Exhale to chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale your left leg up. Exhale, knee to forehead, forehead to knee. Feel that deep, deep internal engagement and extend back up. Exhale, round the back, knee to forehead, forehead to knee. Once again, bring it in, holding empty. Step the left foot through, press your right heel flat. Push back through your right leg to rise up for warrior one. Right, this is a pose to open you up. Opens up the heart, lengthens you out. This should feel like you're decompressing. Again, every time you exhale, look for the stability of the legs. Each time you inhale, look for the buoyancy of the in-breath floating the ribs higher. One more breath. Exhale, both hands down alongside the left foot. Transfer your weight to your left foot. Lift the right leg up. Standing foot holding this pose. Feel free at any time to bring left hand behind the Achilles tendon, elbow behind the knee and forearm behind your calf. Make sure that you're not letting your leg just hang from your right hip. Your right leg is actively keeping the pose light. Root the pads of your toes up to the top of the wall behind you. Soften your neck, your head, and your shoulders. Keep your core engaged instead. Instead of using your neck to pull the forehead closer to your shin, use your abs to, to draw the ribs closer to the side. Now, again, we're going to keep the hands on the floor here, or you can keep your hand behind that, that forearm or, or behind the shin and bring the right leg to the floor. Straighten out the left leg and shoot the right leg back up. Even slower this time, reach your right leg all the way back as the left knee bends and touch down as fluidly and softly and gracefully, silently really, as you can. One more time. Lifting up. And slowly, even more slowly, bend the left knee. Extend energy through the right leg. Touch the toes silently to the ground. Awesome left job. Place both hands to the mat. Shut the left leg back. Take your in breath. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale to up dog. Exhale to downward facing dog. Five more breaths in down dog. This would be a nice time to take a little break. You could do a child pose here or a puppy pose. Be a nice time for you to move if you'd like to move instead of holding. Still. And it'd be a nice time if you want to, to just hold the pose and work the breath, work the exhale. Take a final exhale here in down dog. Once you are empty, <clears throat> hold empty. Remember we're plugging into that banda, jump forward or walk forward. Inhale to extend. Exhale, crown to ground. Bend the knees, now come up to Utkatasana. We're going to take the third part of our awkward series here. So now you're going to bring your, lift the heels just maybe an inch off the floor. Arms are up. Squeeze your inner knees together. Okay, and then once your knees are together, tilt the pelvis, bend the knees a little bit more, and tilt the pelvis forward. So you're balancing on the pads of your toes and the balls of the feet, but the heels are lifted. The butt doesn't move back, you're tucking under. 
So where you're feeling this is, again, tremendous inner thigh work, ab work, okay? As you scoop the pelvis underneath you. So I take an exhale, we're gonna move just halfway down. Just hinging forward. Heels are off of the floor an inch or two at the most. Come up without bringing the heels down and keep squeezing those inner thighs together strongly. Halfway down, move slowly. And halfway, or all the way back up. Oh my goodness. Do we have one more? Let's see. I'm not sure I do. Reach your arms forward, squeeze those inner thighs together strongly, squeeze the inner knees together. Good, and now bring your hands all the way down, about as much as I could do, folding in. Inhale, rise halfway. Plant your palms, jump back or walk back to a plank pose. Exhale down to chaturanga. Inhale to your upward facing dog. Exhale back to downward facing dog. In down dog, lift your right leg up. Exhale, bring right knee to left elbow this time. Inhale, rise. Exhale, bring it in. Last time, lift. And bring it in. Now slide that right knee right in line with your right wrist or even behind the right wrist. You're on the, you're on the right shin here. Lay your left leg down onto the mat with your kneecap on the floor, but then walk your weight forward so you're more on the thigh than you are on the kneecap. Take your left elbow, if possible, down to the ground. Good, and then reach your right arm forward. Inhale, extend this line of energy from your right fingertips to your left toes. Swivel your right arm up. Bring your right hand back so that the right fingertips reach back to touch the uh, floor behind you. So it'll look like this. Good, opening up. Now reach back up and keep your chest open so your right armpit shines towards the side and forward again. This is where we square off the pelvis. Inhale, rotate open to the right. Remember your left shoulder is not where we're rotating from. So we're not moving from the shoulder girdle, the left shoulder girdle. Move from your core. Reach your right arm around. And if possible, push your right fingertips down into the floor. Opening to the right. So this will feel like a twist. Sweep the arm, the right arm back and up. And one more time forward. Engaging your left glutes, push the left hamstrings into your left thigh bone. So you really feel the left thigh bone down on the ground as well. One more time opening, circling the right arm around and through, bending your right elbow. Plug your fingertips into the ground. Twist your spine on your next exhale. Then bring the right arm back up, back behind you even further and over. Both hands back down to the mat here. Stand up onto the pads of your left toes. Now bring your right ankle to the, or the really the top of your right foot to your left wrist. Now, it doesn't need to be completely parallel with the front of the mat, but that's the direction we're moving in. Your back heel is pushing back. You're off of your back knee for right now. Take an inhale here and extend the spine. Notice that your right sit bone is not on the ground and we don't want it to be on the ground. The inner edge, the outer edge rather of the right foot is on the floor rather than the top of the right foot. And now I want you to just work this dialing action a pointing right hip bone down and allowing the right knee to come off of the floor as well. And then you can place the outer, outer knee back down as you open the left hip up. Rotate left hip bone down to the ground, allow the right knee to come up. Place the outside of the right knee down, open the left hip up. Last time and then we're gonna hold it, squaring off and then bringing the right knee down now place the top of your left thigh back down to the ground, just like we did in lizard pose a moment ago, top of the foot on the floor. Walk your hands forward. If this is too intense, remember the right sit bone is not gonna touch the ground. It does not need to touch the floor. When we do that, we kind of jam up the sacroiliac. So keep the hip bone squared down. Move your weight forward off of that left knee. Onto the thigh, make sure your quads are stretching here, or the, sorry, the hamstrings are working. 
If you feel like you can go further, come on to the elbows. If you feel like you can go further still, please go. Right? And if you want to, you can even bend that back knee and bring the left heel to the left glute. If, this, if you're on your kneecap though, then I, I'm gonna ask you to either move forward off of the kneecap or not do that, okay? I know it seems like it's not that big of a deal, but it can really mess with the knee if we don't uh, protect it there. Breathe into the stretch that you're feeling on your right glutes. If you have the flexibility, you can come all the way down so that your, your uh, forehead is on your forearms or even your ribs are resting on your right shin. Hip bones are squared off here, so your right sit bone is not on the ground. Take two more breaths. On your last exhale here, bring your hands back down to the earth and while still holding the Diana Banda, come back up onto your palm. Stand up onto the left pose and step your right leg back. Take your in breath here, high push up. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Let inhale, the left leg will come up. Exhale, left knee to right elbow. Inhale, lift, and exhale in, hugging both arms toward each other. Last time, bend the elbows, hug them in toward each other, touch the knee, then slide that left knee back behind your left wrist or right alongside your left hand. Bring your left kneecap to the ground and onto the top of your, sorry, right kneecap to the ground and on top of your right foot. Then walk the hands forward so you're off of your kneecap entirely and onto the quadriceps instead. Holding in here for a moment. And then uh, when you feel like you have, check in with this left knee, by the way, when you feel like you have stability there, reach your left arm forward. This is, is lizard pose. Let's open up, then reach back behind you, bend the elbow and just push down with the pads of your fingers to take you into a deeper twist here. This will make pigeon variation a lot easier. Good, reach back, straighten out your arm, reach back behind you, back over and forward, squaring off the pelvis. The chest plate faces the ground. Inhale, reach up, open up, make sure that you're not twisting from the right shoulder girdle here. We're twisting from way down deeper. Bend that top elbow, reach back and claw the floor. If you're not able to claw the floor, just reach as though you are clawing the floor. Reach back, straighten out your arm, swivel it through the shoulder and forward again. But notice that the muscles in your right shoulder are stabilizing your shoulder girdle there. So it's a good workout for those muscles of stabilization in the right arm. Just make sure we're not rotating through the right shoulder right now. And reach back and one more time, claw the floor with your left fingertips, lift out of the right shoulder. Open the chest toward the sky. Take a strong exhale to tuck your right ribs under your left. Gaze is at the ceiling. Nice, reach back, circle around, and then bring your left forearm to the floor as well. Stand up onto the <clears throat> pads of your right toes for a moment and push back, and then up onto the palms of your hands. Your hands are shoulder distance apart here. We're gonna bring the right foot back, sorry, left foot back behind the right wrist. I should have said this on the other side, but when you are moving into this position, you may find that your left heel barely comes out from underneath you and that's fine, okay? We don't have to bring the shin parallel with the front of the mat. We're just moving in that direction. You wanna make sure that you are able to be on the outer edge of your foot here to stabilize the knee. Let's move with it. Let's point the right hip bone down this time, allow the left hip bone to come up and allow the left knee to come up. Then place the outer side of that left knee down and just open the pelvis for, or open the hips to the right for a moment. Do that again, square off, allow the left knee to come up and back. The left sit bone stays off the floor throughout. Last time, opening. And I'm sorry, I should have been um, cueing you to stay off of that right knee. I was on the knee because 
that's one of my release valves. But for right now, just keep the right knee up. Go ahead, now find your neutral position here. Now go ahead and place the top of your right thigh on the ground, the top of your right foot on the ground, walk the hands forward. So you'll notice that on this side, my left heel is a lot closer to the groin than my right heel was, okay? My left knee needs more um, protection and my left hip isn't quite as open as my right. So you're going to your place, right? Where you can go, walk your hands forward, most importantly, get off of your right kneecap by walking forward, your weight forward, off of the knee and onto the muscle fibers above the knee, forearms to the ground if possible. You can bend the right knee if you'd like here, drawing your right heel towards your right sit bone. Lots of different levels here. Please, you know, you can go much further than this, right? So if you are super flexible, do the entire Rajakapotanasana, please feel free to go there. If you're just barely able to breathe while you're in the pose with your hands on the floor, this is where we stay. We don't need to go further if we're already feeling it. Close your eyes for a moment and make sure that you can see your body breathing, feel your body breathing and hear your body breathing. Challenging yourself to use your breath, especially your exhale, as the anchor that keeps you tangibly present. Take a final exhale here and maybe we dive into our deepest pigeon pose. Keep Uddiyana Banda intact as you lift, but plant your palms, stand up onto your right toes and step your left foot back. Take your inhale here. Exhale to Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. <clears throat> exhale, down dog. Now take a deep breath in here. And exhale all the air out. Once you've exhaled all the air out of this down dog, draw your knees down, take your inhale, extend your spine, cross your shins and sit back behind your heels. Coming to a seated position on your mat, extend the legs forward. Now, I'm moving into the middle of your mat if you're not there already. Uh, bring your, keep your left foot on the floor, bring the right foot up and cross your right ankle over the top of the left thigh. Okay. Now lean way back so that we don't pinch up this hip right now. But again, a lot of times we'll just let the wrist take all of this. So I would, if I were you, claw the floor, let the wrist stay neutral. Inhale to lift the heart toward the side. So we take a little bit of a back bend, mostly engaging our upper back. There should, it, in fact, you shouldn't feel like anything is pinching in the lower spine, literally at all, okay? So the upper back is engaging. Now begin to slide the left heel closer and closer to the left sit bone. But keep the right knee pointed away from your chest. We're not bringing the right knee in. We're trying to keep this right hip socket uh, right uh, hip open. Okay, chest stays lifted. Now, if you feel like this is enough, please stay here. If you want to go further, walk your hands towards your glutes, which in turn will walk your, your chest closer to your shin. Keep the elbows from locking out. This is the same stretch that we were feeling in our pigeon pose, just using gravity in a different way. Once you get here, please breathe deeply while you're here. Two more breaths. If you feel like you can still go further, your left hand can come to the left shin and use that as a way to draw the ribs in even closer. But if this right knee starts to stickle in, right, then you're gonna bring your right hand to the inside of the right thigh to keep the kneecap pointing to the right. Okay, if you can do both, feel free to go there as well. All right, from here, if you haven't, you're going to bring your right hand back to the ground, left hand back to the ground. You're going to rotate the pelvis over to the right so that your, the top of your right thigh bone comes to the floor. You can stand up onto the pads of your left toes to help make that happen. And then bring it back to neutral. And two more times, right thigh bone down to the ground and back to neutral and down and back to neutral. Good. 
From here, extend the left leg straight. Keep your right ankle to the top of the left side. Make sure your ankle belt, the inside of that ankle is hanging off the inside of your thigh. So we're not crossing over to the outside, unless you're hyper flexible, right? In which case you probably don't need this anyway. <laughs> okay. Reach up and take your in breath. Exhale, dive over the leg. The one thing I will say that is super painful, at least for me, is when the ankle bone is grinding into the thigh bone. So I wouldn't recommend that placement. Okay, so ankle either to the inside or outside. Folding over the left leg, feel a nice stretch on the left hamstring here. Notice again that the right knee is just hovering. It's not on the ground. Just keep it up. Keep, the, keep working on squaring off the hips. Dive forward without sickling the left foot in. Keep the left foot lively. Keep the inner edge of your left foot moving forward. Are you focused on your breath or is the breath once again on autopilot? Is the exhale active or passive? Is the exhale longer than the inhale or much shorter? Lengthen out your exhale. Even when you feel empty, just keep the duration of the exhale going. Keep the action of contraction going. Take a final exhale here. Good, and then reaching your arms forward past your toes. Let's rise up. Swivel your arms around <clears throat> and bring them back behind you. Slide your left heel in so that your left knee is bent again. Press your palms down into the floor and lift up. This time do take the outer ankle, sorry, the inner ankle to the outside of the left thigh. Let it hang off the outside. Lift the pelvis up, glutes are active, and this time your hip flexor gets to be wide open. One more breath. And release the hips back down to the ground. Good. Let's uncross the right leg. Place the sole of your right foot to the floor. Claw the floor at your fingertips. Inhale, lift the heart, engage your upper back. <clears throat> Pick up your left ankle and cross it to the top of the right thigh. Enliven your left foot. So same thing as this is like a seated pigeon pose. Open up the chest, bend the elbows, slide the right heel a little closer to right sit bones. Keep the left kneecap pointing to the left side of the room. It's going to want to come in. We're trying to keep that hip flexor from pinching up. If you would like to go further, walk the hands in closer to the glutes without locking the elbows and or Hands can come to your right, right hand to right shin. Feel the stretch, breathe into the stretch. Because of the way we're seated, there's gonna be that tendency to sink down. If you cannot get out of that sinking, walk your hand back further because you wanna keep the chest open here. You can still bring the leg closer to the ribs without the back rounding. So work in that direction first. Okay, take a final exhale here. Bring your both hands back behind you again. Rotate over to the left this time, stepping up, bringing the left thigh onto the ground as you lift the right heel up and then back to center. So there's a little bit of movement through the sacroiliac. Come onto the top of the left thigh to the best of your ability and back down. And last time. Wonderful job, go up from there, extend the right leg straight, take your inhale, reach up, and exhale, dive. Notice how different this side may feel from the, op from the uh, opposite side. I always run out of time on this class. I don't know what it is. All right, so <laughs> focus on your breathing here. Left knee stays hovering above the floor. Root through the inner edge of your right foot. You can bring your arms back behind you. Remember that the deepening of the pose is coming from this, the exhale. The way the exhale draws the one side of the body toward the other side of the body. Draws, in this case, your ribs towards your right thigh. Feel the stretch, breathe into the stretch. If you need to go further, Activate the muscles that are supporting the stretch more. Instead of yanking, pulling, or forcing with your arms, even you can hold on with your arms. Just make sure that they're not the only muscle groups engaged, right? Let's take one more exhale and reach past the toes. Rise up. Swivel your arms back behind you. 
And now press the palms down, stand onto the sole of your right foot again and lift those glutes up. Your left knee is pointing to the left side of the room. The glutes are active here. Your hamstrings on the right leg are active. Your crown is drawing back unless your neck is tired, in which case your chin can tuck into the soft part of the throat. Depending on how open the hip is, right, the knee might be pointed up more here, but our intention is to get the knee to point toward the left wall. Release the hips without that knee coming in towards your shoulder. And once the hip touches down, place the left foot on the floor, lower onto your back and draw your knees into your chest. Rocking side to side here. After rocking side to side, take both knees over to the left. The left forearm can come to the top of the right thigh, take your twist. Breathing deeply to the right side of your lower back. Strong exhale to ring out. Remember when you're empty, you just keep that ringing out going for at least another, let's say, um, second or two before you take your next in breath. Left arm reaches out, take your inhale, bring the knees up. Exhale over to your right, right forearm on top of left side, press down gently. Reach the left arm to the left. Huge in breath into lower back, left side. Strong exhale to ring out from your center, bringing the left shoulder blade closer to the floor and the left ear closer to the mouth. The deepest inhale yet, followed by an exhale that is longer than the previous in breath. Even when you're empty, we keep the exhale going to ring out and go a little further. One more breath. Bring those knees back up to neutral. Clasp your hands around your shin. Bring your forehead into your knees, knees into the forehead. Engage the abs and tell your spine that it's completely supported. And then release your head down, extend the legs out and move into final resting pose. Now, if you would like to, before you take your resting pose, if you would like to take any other finishing poses of choice, please feel free. If you wanna go into an inversion, I highly recommend it. We're just out of time on my end, so please feel free to do that as well. If you're ready to rest, take a second before you just lay there, right? To just shake everything out, make sure that all the tension in the body that maybe we brought up to the surface to be released, just consciously release it, right? Even if it's a simple symbolic movement, do it anyway, it really makes a difference. And then once you do feel relaxed and you, and you sense that feeling of relaxation, stay present with it. So often we, we say, okay, I'm relaxed and now I'm gonna let my mind wander because I'm done. We never really identify with this relaxation state. So even while we're relaxed, our mind is busy. For these final moments, I will challenge you in the same way I challenged you to anchor your mind to your breath, to now anchor your attention to the feel, tangible attention, right? Feeling, sensing, experiencing, listening, um, watching, perceiving, what it feels like, what it looks like, what it sounds like to be in a relaxed body. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Namaste.